Welcome to another edition of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. And we have a special day today. It's our first day with our sponsors of Herman Marshall being our whiskey sponsor today. This is a great, great batch of whiskey. We were able to go out and see their facility out in Garland and uh, and got a chance to test a couple of these whiskeys throughout the throughout the day. And it was uh, it got to a point where I probably had to figure out I had to drive home so I couldn't be drinking too much more. But I was able to take some of these home. These are some pretty good stuff. It is they are Dallas County's first distillery uh, of handcrafted, award-winning small batch whiskey, and it's aged in uh, white oak barrels. They have a they have a rye, they have a Texas Texas bourbon and single malt, and a blended whiskey, all built from the grain grain up, just like good friends and good whiskey. So we just appreciate them being a part of of this show and. And uh, looking forward to it, especially when they're building a new facility out in Wiley. It's going to be about four times as big. It's going to have an outdoor venue. And we're looking forward to that. So a place where we can, maybe we can go do the show. We can just sit there and tie one on every once in a while. So, but we appreciate them and we're looking forward to it. So, and today's guest is, he's kind of, uh, he's kind of a little different guy. We were talking with uh, David Van Sleep, I think last week about this and, uh, this name got mentioned several times. I don't know why, but uh, here he is, good old Matt Kinsey. Matt, how are you, sir? What's going on, brother? So for the folks here, can you state your name and rank, please? Matt Kinsey, Sergeant, U.S. Army, retired. <laughs> retired. And how old are you? 37. I had to think about it. 37. 37. So, okay. So you had to think about it. You're not that old. It could have been from the IED possibly that took out your leg or is it just, yeah. just, just being a Kentucky boy? Probably just all the above, man. You know, a couple hits in the head, a couple explosions. And then, you know, you know me, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, I do. It's, but it's, but it's fun and interesting hearing these stories. And I, and I want to, I want to go back to Matt Kinsey, the athlete starting in high school and going into college, right? You were a baseball player. What else did you play? I played football and uh, baseball in high school. Um, had a really good senior in football, had a few guys looking, but you know, no grabs. And then uh, baseball, uh, went to a junior college in Illinois for a year and uh, I was young and dumb and, just things didn't work out, so I left and then uh, ended up in the Army. <laughs> so after a year of school, you just figured that baseball wasn't it? You were just, let's just go to the Army? Was that, that was about yeah, it? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I was always fascinated with the military, and I come from a military background. Both my grandparents served, and, um, you know, this is back in 03, so, you know, we were in both wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and, uh, you know, I didn't know if I was good enough to go past college or whatever at the time like i said i was really stupid when i was younger and uh so i decided to get out and go to the military and you know they tell you're gonna see the world yeah i saw let's see the states and afghanistan <laughs> those are about the only good places i stopped i mean so how so so what are you telling your parents at this point uh college in for me i'm, I'm enlisting is that all it was since dad's in the car with yeah, you correct <laughs> yeah he's there he's listening yeah, pretty much. I was just like, I, uh, you know, I want to join the military. Uh, it's always been something I've wanted to do. And, uh, you know, they they were a little upset. I mean, obviously their parents are scared, you know, that their baby was going to end up going off the war. But uh, they were very, very supportive. Uh, through my and the, I just, so you enlist. What year was it? You enlisted? 03, 04? 2nd of March, 2006. Oh, 06. Okay. And you were over in Af you were in Afghanistan, Iraq? I went to Afghanistan in February of 07, got back in May of 08, went back in August of 2009, and I got dinged in June of 2010. Your unit get dinged, and then were you riding in a Humvee, or were you guys on foot? Uh, No, on the one that got my foot, I was uh, on a night patrol, and I stepped on a landmine. What was your first thought when that thing, when you oh, stepped? Oh, shit. <laughs> See, honest with you. Did it knock you out or just knock you over? What happened? For just... a second, like, 
I was, I, I remember being awake the whole time. Like I was laying, I'll never forget. I was laying there on the ground. There's doing med to me and putting tourniquets on. And that hurt. That was the worst pain was the tourniquet. I could handle the explosion stuff, but when they threw that tourniquet on, God, that hurt. But, uh, I remember la- I was sitting there laying and I go, I go, I'm freaking foot hurts. <laughs> and, uh, my platoon sergeant goes, well, Matt, you ain't got one. And then I looked down and I was like, oh shit, I really don't. <laughs> that ain't good. <laughs> uh, oh my God. <laughs> I can, uh, if, if any of these people ever actually knew how you were and what kind of personality you had, that just sounds about right. Oh, did you even see it? Was it, was it completely gone or was it just hanging off? <laughs> or, or did it was go- like half gone. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> And my toes were gone. Yeah, all that shit was gone. But like, you could—it was like halfway there. It's pretty disgusting. I'm surprised they didn't bring it back and give it to you and just tell you to hold on while they took you back. Well, my buddies found my toes. (laughs) (laughs) The funniest, Kevin. The funniest part of the story is, so we're in the middle of the Argan Dob River Valley. So they had to take me. They had to carry me on a stretcher to the riverbed. Um, we just pulled into Valhalla and if you guys have never been here, holy cow, you should pull some strings and come play this. This is beautiful. Matt uh, is on his way you. to a, a celebrity event for veterans and another thing. We'll talk to you about that here in a minute since you're pulling into to Eden. I want to interrupt your golf game. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. So the funny part of me when I got blown up was, so I'm getting carried out on the stretcher to the helicopter and, um, my buddy uh, was like right next to me. And I was like, hey man, I was like, I gotta know. I was like, is my you know what still down there? <laughs> and he, and the medic was like, yeah, Matt, you're good. And I go, uh-uh, I ain't buying this. I was like, somebody like grab it. Or like, please, somebody help me. And so my buddy sees, he reached out and grabs it and he goes, buddy, I promise it's all there. And I go, thank God, I'm cool then. Oh my goodness! <laughs> never a dull moment. No, never a dull moment. So after that, you no. you were you were you just get sent back to the states. You go to Walter Reed. Yeah, I went to Kandahar Airfield to uh, undergo my first surgery because I'd lost a lot of blood and needed uh, to get stabilized. Then I went to Bagram Airfield in northern Afghanistan. You guys heard of Bagram through the wonderful pullout that we had yep. a year ago, and then. Uh, I went to Germany uh, for a couple surgeries. Then I was medevac to uh, Walter Reed Army Medical Center. How long was it? Was the rehab and the therapy at Walter Reed before you were able to 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 leave the facility? Uh, I walked. I walked six weeks after. Uh, I walked six weeks after my uh, injury with my prosthetic for the first time, and then I was running and probably well, I ran an obstacle course. I got hit June second, and I ran an obstacle course on nine eleven, so I made a pretty quick recovery. And that was what year was that? You said oh nine? Two thousand ten. Two thousand ten and then Hey, I gotta drop I gotta do a drop bag real quick or drop my bag off here real quick. Give me a second, okay, buddy? Well your dad's there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he can talk to you. <laughs> Mr. Kinsey. Hello. hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So 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 your son's dealing with this. You know, I know c- communication between over there and, and uh and here is not you know, it's it's not you don't, it's not on a daily basis. So when did you actually find out about Matt or how did you find out about Matt? I, I, I work in ag- agriculture and, um, uh, I was planning a soybean research plot in Southern Indiana and, and I was backing my tractor trailer and planter into a parking lot at a hotel and my phone rang and it was Sherry, his mom. And she was, uh, I couldn't hardly understand her. I just knew that something had happened to Matt. And so I called the, uh, liaison officer and uh, he informed me that you know matt was wounded and he was uh incubated and in surgery at the time and uh i said okay he said he he started telling me what a great soldier Matt was and i go really dude i know my son's a really good soldier is he gonna live it live or die and he said no i'm so sorry he said he's in surgery but he's he has a major injury to his right foot. So I, I pretty well knew what had happened. So how well, I, got a, I, had, I had a police escort. I had cops waiting for me at every county line 
because I was three hours and 15 minutes away from home. And I think I made it in two hours and five minutes. With an escort. <laughs> so when was, so once that phone call went, how long after that were you able to actually see Matt? Uh, he got hit. I think it was Wednesday night, Tuesday night. And I was at the hospital at Walter Reed um, Sunday night. So, and he, was, he was in on a Wednesday night, and I and I was I was there at Walter Reed uh, Sunday night. Okay. So for everybody listening out there, Matt, Law, it's Matt. See, it's about halfway down your shin. Is that right? Is it mid? Uh, mid shin. I lost just... right below the ankle. So like, you know, you look down where your ankle bones are. See, I wish we had you on camera. You could oh. just stick the nub up, and everybody could see it. Well, you know what? Maybe next week when I'm not trying to represent the great state of Kentucky and PGA, I'll, I'll do that. If you'll have me again, <laughs> they might not want you, want you back. Either one of them. <laughs> shit, I, shit. I don't know if I even brought enough golf balls for this place today. Holy hell. <laughs> There's probably a Walmart down the street and go grab some for real though. Oh, you know what you've been making? You should make yourself a, a golf club that for huh? like a prosthetic golf club that goes on your foot. You can try and hit it. You know, you're always up to yeah. doing stuff like that. They like on Caddyshack, you know, you just automatically find a ball, you know? Yeah, exactly. Playing winter rules. Exactly. Exactly. So you so so 2010 you get this happens and then you're back. And then how long after that did did you get the call from David Van Sleet? I got the call in November. And uh we were set to go to Arizona in uh in uh March. Uh and I went to Arizona and uh you know, we crushed it. Everything was great camp. And then, I mean, Kevin, you played, you know how it is. Like one thing leads to another and life goes in fast forward, you know? And these were just camps for kids. These weren't even for you guys. Was it? No, I mean, it was like, we had a camp. Well, I mean, we had some kids that we did, we did like, it was more of less at the beginning. Jacob. It was a softball thing, but we had to play wheelchair basketball. That's I'm never doing that again. Uh, Little fat stuff, but um, you know, we realized we had something special with the softball, and um, you know, just I like I said, life went into fast forward after that, man. Like we got, we opened up, we we formed the team, opened up in D.C. at George Mason, and uh, shoot, we went. Well, you jumped on board shortly after that. I mean, we went everywhere, dude. Yeah, three times a month, probably. You guys were playing, and it was. And it was competitive as anything, right? It's especially those yeah. guys. I, w- I wonder how many of the guys actually played college or played high school ball, you know, then enlisted kind of like you did. Because um, some, some of the boys could play, right? Some of those guys could Yeah, play. quite a few. Quite a few of them were, the, were athletes that had done that. I mean, um, the team I play for now, the Warriors, the baseball team, I mean, everybody's a former collegiate athlete, uh, that's on the baseball team I'm playing with now. And it, it's flat out impressive, man. So, so going towards to going to that now, do you, do you wish you would have stayed in college and finished out and played no. baseball and tried to see how, it, you know, see how it would have, would have turned out or no? In hindsight, being an athlete, y'all, dude, being an athlete, you always wonder, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm 37 and I ran up to what? 85 a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I was throwing like 84 to 85, 86 when I threw up in Michigan about a month ago. But, I mean, you know, I got to serve my country. So, like, you know, I've got to do some really neat things. You know, I got to jump out of airplanes and shoot shit for a living for four and a half years. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, serving your country, no greater honor than serving this great country, you know? Absolutely. And uh, I have no regrets doing it, man. None at all. I'd do it again. Yeah, the French, the friendships you made while you were over there, you know. The, oh yeah, the, the I've the got guys that I got three or four guys that I still talk to weekly, you know, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. And likewise, so it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, the the camaraderie you guys that that, that you build. Um, it's interesting you talk about how hard you were throwing, and people don't know it was it was your right leg that was that yeah. you lost below the the ankle. So so trying to push off of a prosthetic, right, and pitch. With that is something takes impressive. Work. Exactly. It takes <laughs> a lot of work. Exactly. So the, they can see the picture I have in, uh, on the videos of you and Jenny when you were playing in uh, the Celebrity Softball Dude. Classic, the All-Star Game. That's the only picture I can find, I took dude. George Brett Yard, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And I bet you pimped it and bat flipped it as well, didn't you? I did, too, Kevin. I did. So it was my third AV. Okay, first off, I was scared to death to walk up there the first one, right? I mean, I've never played in front of 40,000 before, you know? And, you know, Andre Dawson, Ozzy Smith, Steve Garvey, uh, Dave Winfield, all those guys, Jenny's on my team. And I'm like, what in the hell am I doing here, you know? So I get up to, I get comfortable. So I hit, I hit single, single. So I'm sitting on a bench and Andre Dawson goes, dude, go for it. I was like, all right, I got you. So George Brett flips one in and I shake the biggest daddy hack you've ever seen. And I pop it straight up to the catcher. And as soon as I did it, I went, oh shit, she's going to catch this. And I'm going to be like an idiot on national TV. So she dropped it. And I was like, all right, thank God I'm not missing another one. And as soon as she let go, I was like, I got you. And I hit that thing. As soon as I hit it, I was like, that's gone. I did a little bat flip, whatever. And uh, as I was rounding third, George Brett walked over. And I'm not going to say what he told me, but you can probably guess what, what was said. To you can me. say whatever you want on here. There's no, there's no filters on this thing. Okay. So I walked, as I was rounding third, he goes, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> that's all you had to say was the Hawk told I, me to do it. And then I got a, and then I got a hug from Jenny Finch. So, I mean, shit, <laughs> great day. That was, were you the first one invited to play? Yeah. So Saul and I were the first two Wounded Warriors invited to play in the one at Kansas city, which was, that was an awesome venue. Um, and then, uh, you know, they've had several guys that have had the opportunity to go do that after me, which is really, you know, really good that other veterans, and other amputees and, and things like that are getting the opportunity to, to do the cool stuff like that. I'm sitting here looking at this picture again. You talk about, we were talking about the prosthetics and uh, you said the one, you said the original one weighed what? Seven pounds. I think it was either seven pounds or nine pounds. I forget. And now you're, now it's, they're down to what? 3.3, I believe is what I have. Are they still fit in the same way? Cause you know, the one you have, it seems like it's, it goes, it's a pretty long prosthetic cause it comes yeah. all the way up to your knee. Okay. Right. Yeah. It goes all to the knee because I use my whole leg. Yeah. And you do you don't like you say you do or don't like the blade? Can't really. My leg's so long that it's hard to get a blade. So like my new one, um, I'll try to send you a pic when I get a chance. Uh, it's got like a the blade running behind the socket that my leg goes in. And it's got a foot on the bottom of it, so it's kind of like a spring. Um, it's not like the dude that you know the whatever that guy was in the Olympics that's in jail now. Oh, it's uh, not the oh, blade uh, like he had. I know you're talking about the guy from South Africa. I can't think. Yeah, of his name. yeah, yeah. I can't. I, no, okay. Uh, it ain't like that, but I'll, I'll try to get you a picture when I get a chance. So I know you guys dealt with, you know, with as far as the uh, the inside the the uh, the lock, the airtight lock around the knee and stuff, the blistering and everything else. Have they the advances with that? Have, they, have those helped out as far as and because it used to be well, a rubber sleeve. Is that what it is on the inside? Yeah, yeah, I still got one. It looks like a big old condom you throw on your leg. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, that's on you, to be honest with you. Like, you got to know your limits. And, you know, if I get, you know, you, Kevin, you've played a few games with me. Like, you know, come in a half inning, take a leg off, dry the sweat off, you know. Yep. Go back on and you're good to go. I mean, you got to know your limits. You know, I'm fortunate. I can wear mine for 16, 18 hours a day. Hell, sometimes I pass out with it on. We'll not touch that, but it's going to happen every now and then. Yeah, but um, you know, you just gotta take care of yourself. I mean, can't be an idiot. No, you're right. And it's some of some of the guys have a prosthetic with the shoe already on it. You know, so is it one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the cleat on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, it's already built in. So that's that's why. How does it does it affect your golf game at all? Uh, it was a little difficult at first um, to get used to to playing with it, but um, you adjust. You know what I mean? It's just it's like baseball. It's a game of adjustments. You know. Yeah. So you're playing, so, are you playing in a meds league now in, in, in Kentucky? Yeah, I do this thing called PGA hope. It's a uh, free golf for veterans. We do it every Tuesday and, uh, you know, we have PGA professionals come out and teach us, give us tips and everything like that. And then, um, every year there's a thing called the secretary cup and it's all the PGA hope chapters and she's hot PGA hope chapters. And, um, the best players from each chapter, each state get to compete, uh, in a big tournament. And that is today, and I probably need to go get checked in, my man. Sorry. The uh, 
Matt is at he's at Valhalla right now, country club playing in an in an event that I, I'm assuming he's probably going to hit somebody with a golf ball, and everything 100%. else. Yeah, you're going to do that. You're going to you're going to lose uh, well, lose, yeah. lose a few of those and everything else. But it's you know I just yeah the baseball stuff. You like the baseball stuff better than the, than the softball stuff or what? Or, or the golf? Uh, yeah. What, which one? Which one are you? I don't know. I mean, golf you can play your whole life. You know, you only got so many years to play baseball. And, uh, you know, I hit my limit, I think, with baseball. I mean, my elbows junk, my shoulders junk, my good knee junk, my good ankles junk. Um, and the last time I threw, I literally left everything out there I had. So, you know, I, uh, I've been very blessed with my career, being able to, uh, to play for as long as I have. And, uh, you know, I'd really do enjoy golf. Just not very good at it. Yeah, but you can get out and play all the time if that's if that's what you're gonna do. Absolutely, it takes, it's, it's easier yeah, on your body. I mean, I'm, than a nine, I'm a nine handicap. I'm getting there. Yeah, but that's what they make the whiskey for. That's what they make. Uh, Say that again, buddy. Huh? Say that again. I said that's what they make the whiskey for. Well, yeah, fling lube. Right. They it's also, it. you know, it's funny. They make these these uh, these CBD gummies. I've been taking these things. You ever, try, you ever tried any of those? I have to send you some of these, Matt. They're, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've dealt with it once or twice. And no, they're these amazing. Are, these are good. These are these are actually pretty good. They're. Uh, I get to get you a bot. Get you some of these to try out. These little. I take two of them because I. It's, I base it off the off the size. About 30, 40 minutes in, and once you take it, it feels like the couch is engulfing you, and just you're yeah. ready just to. I don't know the heck in. Like they're just ready hey, to Kevin. relax. Yes, sir. Man, I hate to cut this short, brother. But I gotta go check in and get ready. My apologies. All right. Well, where's your dad? Did he leave. Uh, you can talk to him for a second if you want. Yeah, we'll finish up with your dad. And I'll get you right, some hey, of these early bird gummies too, Matt. I'll send you some of these. Yeah, please do. And like I said, if I can get – if you want – if you, I'd love to do this again if you're dabbing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'll get you on. We'll, fi- we'll figure it out and get you on here somehow, somehow, some way. All right, bud. Take right, care. Hey, I'm going to go check in, and here's dad. Yep. All right. <laughs> Mr. Kinsey. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your son, he is all over the place, isn't he? Excuse me again. I, I'm sorry. I said, he's all over the place, isn't he? Yes. Has he always been like that? Yeah, Matt. Uh, well, I have two sons. One was a third day student and the uh, rather quiet. Matt's been the adventurous one. Actually, <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> so, so he wasn't the straight A student then, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a good dude. He's got a heart as big as gold. He was a really, really good soldier, um, really proud of his accomplishments in the military. And, you know, he was a great athlete in high school. And, uh, you know, kids make decisions. Uh, the night that I found out he had joined the Army, I was halfway across the United States and the mountains coming home when I got the phone call from my wife. Said, you know what your son, youngest son just did? And I go, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was your first thought. And it, did you try yeah. and talk him out of it, or was it just one of those? Nope. You're old enough you know, to make your decision? decision. You know, my dad was military. Uh, I was born on Army base, and uh, before I'd been through high school, I'd been through 41 states and seven countries. So, you know, I knew what the military life was going to be, but I also knew he wasn't going to be a cook either. So, so it's you know, it all worked. It worked out for him. You know, I mean, he's you know what he's done and and everything else. The the uh, you know what amputees look up to now these guys when they first started with those camps and everything else of giving these kids opportunities right that they never thought they would have to have that uh, I mean, now is, these guys are excelling he is amazing with kids he really is he's amazing with them he's a he works at a, at a sports academy in louisville as an instructor and uh you know i get to go and watch and, and uh, he does an, uh, an amazing job he's uh we went through about two weeks of what am i going to do after he got blown up but then i said you know there's a reason that you're still here and you're going to find out that what that the reason is so he has yeah it's 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 amazing how they were able to you know like you said to come back because i think that's the biggest thing when these guys come back from war they, they don't have an identity right they're afraid no. of how the how the world's going to take them you know no you know we went running around a little bit and, and he had some friends come over and, and this and that and running around the wheelchair and he never really was comfortable with that and he didn't know how um uh, to uh, put that around on uh, he kind of him and one of the other buddies that lost a, uh, a foot they went buying shoes and it was kind of funny watching them because neither one of them had been fitted for prosthetics yet and they were sitting in the chairs and 
man goes, oh, I just need the left and he needs the right. And I thought the poor girl's going to cry herself. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they did make a, they made a, a good thing out of a bad thing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, they did. And, you know, David, when he created that, that softball thing and, and to get back to, you know, to where, you know, Matt is now with this, with the baseball side of it, to be able to, you know, competing at, at that high level, get those, ju- sure. the, you know, that, 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 you know, this competitive juice is flowing, be able to do it. And they were, and, you know, for five, six years, right. They were going three times a week or three times a month, right. On these trips sure. playing, I mean, a hundred plus softball games throughout the year, right. Doing it. And they were, yeah. uh, and it, it's a lot. You think about it, especially on a prosthetic, you know, Matt was, was Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, some of those guys, you know, put up with a lot of pain and everything. And, you know, a lot of those kids are the ultimate competitors. Matt is and Matt is the ultimate competitor. He can't even spell the word lose. And uh, uh I got a big kick out of him up in Detroit here a few weeks ago when I left Sherry and I got to go watch him pitch his last game. And uh a guy uh bundered or tried to st- oh stole second. Um well their catcher they've got on this baseball team's a great young man, but he, he doesn't have a right arm, so he catches the baseball, throws the uh baseball up in the air, throws the glove off, catches the baseball and throws it out. So <laughs> third baseman couldn't really charge the ball either. And so next Matt kinda of jumped on him a little bit and you know, guy kinda of smarted off and well anyway, he came up the bat again in the fourth inning. So anyway, uh I knew what was going to happen there because I watched him play baseball too many years. And then Matt hit him right in the ass with fastball. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, she's a very competitive person. And that's good. You know, that's a, that's a good thing for these guys. You know, it's especially from where he's, you know, where you talk about where he's, where they've come from as far as, um, you know, being, being lost with the, like he said, you said, he asked you, what am I going to do? And that was 12 years ago. You know, here he is now. You know, working, helping out as much as you can be, you know, being, you know, a beacon of hope and light for somebody that's that's been through it. Sure. You know, those guys are still coming back uh, from Afghanistan. And, and that just that group together, that original group of uh, of the Wounded Warrior softball guys. I mean, it was I'm sure those guys that I think that helped probably helped them more than anything, be able just to like a, as a unit and then be able to to go out and, and, and do things and make a mark. But. You know, I don't, I don't think you ever thought he would get to where it is. You know, Matt maybe had dreams of playing professional baseball, and but it, you know, it didn't work out. But you know, here he is still playing at 37. Most there's a lot of guys yeah. that aren't right that are playing baseball, yeah. traveling around doing this. Yeah, I tell you why. When he was going through all of his therapy there, I have to. You know, I'll never forget David Van Sleet for the opportunity. But when Matt found out about the uh, the what was going to happen with the Wounded Warrior Amputee Softball Team, I mean, his eyes lit up a chance to play ball and he, uh, he like doubled his workouts and uh just busted butt in, in their therapy and, and everything and uh i mean that was a godsend from david that matt got they have the opportunity to play there does he ever does he ever talk about being in the military at all or is that just kind of i mean it seems like he's got a pretty no open he's very open it. yeah you can uh, tell some guys aren't i just wasn't sure if he ever brings up stuff that you know that you know hey dad i've never you know what he has his moments and every one of those young men have their demons mm-hmm. uh you know every one of them have their demons and uh but uh we we've gotten to know a lot of the boys that were in that squad and, and in his company and we actually had several of them over thanksgiving one time one time sure and i and it's really kind of neat they don't talk about it in front of their families i think that's the only one of those guys that's not married and have kids now but uh, when the kids go to bed and the booze comes out, well, the stories come out. And mom and dad don't know whether to cry, laugh, or whatever, you know. So, yeah, and some people can, you know, might be in shock of, oh my gosh, how are they able to talk about it? But I think the best thing is just being able, being able to talk about it, right, to get it out. Sure, <coughs> absolutely. And that, and so. you know, Matt has has, you know, especially the guys that were on there, the, the different stories they have as far as you know what happened. Um, yeah, and a lot of them, they're young. I mean, they're young kids. Right. I mean, that, that group was made up of a bunch of young kids and there were a couple that of older is. guys between Todd and uh, I think Todd, Todd was probably one of the oldest ones because he was in uh, sure. Desert Storm, I think. Correct. Yeah. And Tommy Carlo. So, I mean, and so you've got guys that but those guys being able to compete and those boys could play. And you're right. They put the workouts in. They put the work in and, you know, getting out and, and, and you know, hopefully, you know, spreading the word as far as, far as it, you know, it's OK because PTSD is, is a big big thing this you know these days in this country yeah. even mental health 
And uh, for these guys to come back and show that, hey, you're capable of doing whatever you can, this is that's a big thing. And I, I hope that that Matt and those guys understand, you know, the the, the effect they have on people uh, that are dealing with that I stuff. I think you're 100 percent right there, 100 uh, percent right. So, um, you know, Matt's got a lot. You know, I just watched some of his clientele down here. He, one of the kids, he uh, was a hitting instructor for uh, uh, for several years. A super nice young man. Uh, signed with the Washington Nationals uh, a year ago for a lot of money. And, you know, he's still, him and Matt are just best friends. Matt still works him out. But you watch him work with those kids and his knowledge of the game. And don't let Matt fool you. He's a pretty good golfer. Uh, he's working now. He's putting a lot of effort in learning this game. And, uh, and he's a very competitive person. I mean, we had father and son weekend this weekend, so. We played golf all weekend, just had a blast. But he's a very competitive person. He's getting really good at it. He studies everything he does really well. Well, that's good, especially on the golf side. If he could, you know, maybe he could be the first. You could join the senior tour as far as an amputee of playing golf. I mean, I don't know. If, so, as he's far got as, a lot of people helping him. Yes. With his, uh, you know, he's went from a 20 handicap down to a nine in, in about a year and a half. And, and uh, he's, he's, uh, he's doing really well. I'm really proud of him. Well, that's good that he's able to continue that and, and uh, like you said, help, help, uh, helping these kids, helping whoever, you know, being able yeah. to, to help people. But like I said, in the same time, I think it helps him as well, being able to. Because he's always a, I've never seen him be quiet. You know, he's always been, he's always been that fiery person. Um, even when we go out, you know, we go out to the bar, they just like to have a good time, relax, and, uh, you know, and just, just be themselves, right? There's nothing, there's nothing to hide anymore, right? as far as no. I gather with him. But some, like you said, some guys do have demons to talk about. Um, I'm sure Matt does as well. But at the same time, yeah. I think it's, you know, hey, it was part of it, and I've, and I've moved on, you know. So it's... Well, you know, he said, I knew, what I, I knew what I signed up for. You know, one thing Matt does, he said, I knew what I signed up for. And uh, he says, if I had to do all over, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Which is good. That's that he's never met a stranger. He's never met a stranger in his life. He's got a personality that most people... Did not realize he's never met a stranger. Yeah, and that's good, especially with kids, right? That, that's the thing they want them to be able to open up and sure. uh, and, and see these because that's right. That's the first, that's what draws their attention, especially if he's wearing shorts. You see, the first thing they look at is is that foot, and they look at yep. him. And, and uh, gosh, my kids were enamored when, when he was here staying with us, and he, he you know he had the prosthetic off, and the kids were just they couldn't believe it. What is that? What is going on with his with his foot? You know, he tries to <laughs> tries to wiggle it and never try, you know, everything, and the kids are just sure. but they love it. But but right, that's the, that's the conversation piece. You know, he's got a story with it, and that's that's what I think helps most people is the story that comes sure. with it, right? That he's able, right. able to help. So, um, you know, we wish him the best of luck with, with what he's doing. Hopefully, like I said, he keeps playing that golf, and and uh, you never know where it's going to end up. So, are you playing? No. With, are you playing with him today? No, I get to be here to watch and. Uh... <laughs> Uh, this is only like a nine hole tournament. So when they get through with all the rigmarole and all that, um, we're going to go grab nine holes somewhere else this afternoon. <laughs> oh, they won't let you play the other nine. <laughs> Say what? They won't let you play the other nine out there. No, no, this is all about them. I'm just lucky enough to be here to watch. No, I'm talking about the course Valhalla. I'm talking about, if they would let you guys go play the other, another nine holes out there. No, I'm not sure that would be allowed since we're not members and I forget what it costs to play here. So. That's above my pay raise, <laughs> pay scale. <laughs> What's the weather like right there, right now? Right now, it's uh, about 54 degrees and sunshine. Oh, it's nice. Nice weather to be out there to play some golf and stuff. So, Yeah, we played two courses over the weekend we've never played before. And uh, we had, we've had a blast. Well, that's good. You guys are able just to ha enjoy this time together. Um, Absolutely. And do that. <laughs> How far is he living from you? He's living in Louisville, correct? He lives on New Albany. It's right across the river from Louisville. Okay. And then we live uh, at Rockville, Indiana, which if you it's like 60 miles straight west of Indianapolis. So we're three hours and 15 minutes away. Okay. My sister lives in Sunman. Okay. You know, we're summoned that. So we got some neighbors here from Noblesville, too, as well. So, uh, I don't know where that's at. Yes, but I've never been. Never been to Indiana. Okay. So I need to get down to Kentucky. Matt always tells me to come down and uh, – and hang uh, out, but we need to get him to come down. He needs to come out here and play some golf too. There's, there's <laughs> yeah. a little bit warmer weather he and does. everything else. So hopefully we'll see them. Because I was talking to David about the baseball side. They're going to start. I think they're going to play again maybe in December. Hopefully, and because okay. there's a bunch of men's leagues that are around here. Those I guess it's the senior baseball leagues that Matt plays in one of those. Correct? Yes. 
So hopefully they can, they're, they're all over the place and maybe travel here because there's a lot of it here. They try and get me to go out and do it. I said, no, I'm too old for that stuff. I can't get out there and do it. So, um, but no, we, I appreciate you being on here. You and Matt, I know he had to jump off and go, go lose some golf balls, but I appreciate the, you know, your insight in the, into, uh, you know, what, what, what Matt's done and, and, uh, you know, how he's made you proud of, of what he's become and what he continues to be. So, you know, I appreciate you guys jumping on today and, Enjoy the weather. Well, enjoy so the much. golf. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, Mr. Kinsey. We will talk to you guys later. All right. You have uh, a great day. Thank you, sir. We'll talk to you later. Mm-hmm. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.